Well, we know all about the big takeover by uh, Kraft of Cadbury's. And Simon's taken over the chocolate out of the bar that we had. Do you have that chocolate? <laughs> it's not all mine, and it's not all edible. Some of it actually comes from yesteryear. Because what's going to actually happen to the chocolate? We know about the deal, we know about the money. But what's going to actually happen to the brands in the stores? Will an American takeover mean an American makeover? Well, with me this morning, I've got Alison Stewart-Allen, uh, who's marketing and brand expert from International Marketing Partners, and Robert Opie from the Museum of Brands Packaging and Advertising. Good morning to you both. Now, you brought in, Robert, uh, lots of old brands going from, uh, you know, from yesteryear to the present day. Uh, do you want to just talk us through exactly what we're looking at here and what the lessons of history are when a big company takes over a brand? What, is, what happens to it? Yeah, absolutely. Kraft, we know essentially as a cheese company, and we don't want our chocolate to become cheesy. But they do have form and history, which is interesting. They took over Suchard Toberone. They haven't changed the Toberone. Is that, so that was then, yep. and this is now. Correct. So not an enormous amount of change. Obviously, no. it's much bigger, but it looks kind they, of the same. They took over Souchard Milker, and they took off the, the, the brand Souchard. They remained with Milker, okay. and that seems to be the trend. When a company takes over seems... another big company, like when Cadbury's took over Fry's, yeah. here you've got Fry's Picnic, but now Cadbury's Picnic. Here you've got... Fry's Crunchy, yeah. now very much Cadbury's Crunchy. See if we can get that. So the brand name is very strong and is very important. Are you worried about the future of the Cadbury brand? Uh, I, and I, the taste of the chocolate, even? Well, I think there's going to be a perception that it's changed, but I'm not worried. Okay. Uh, Alison, um, now, one of the great-granddaughters of George Cadbury said she'd turn in her grave if, she, if the ancestors knew that uh, cheese, uh, hamburg cheese that you put on hamburgers, they're running a chocolate company. What kind of cultural fit do you think there is between these two companies? Well, I think it's going to be very interesting because uh, Kraft is a very American portfolio-run company. Uh, and the real question is, given that they already own another chocolate company, Souchard, to what extent will they integrate the two? Yeah. But culturally, the other thing is, is Cadbury is all about philanthropy. It's about looking after the employees. It's about Bourneville. Yeah. Uh, and that's not really what Kraft is about. Kraft is about the numbers, the bottom line, much more focused on that. That's the big fear. For example, they make Souchard, for example. Will they move the Cadbury production to Souchard? Are you going to be churning out this one and this one from the same factory? Yeah, well, that's a good, great question. Now, uh, Cad uh, Kraft historically don't integrate their businesses to that degree, uh, but they do uh, have a, a lot of pressure now, having funded this deal, to find ways to save money. So uh, that is certainly a risk, but I really doubt Kraft would go down that path. Robert, what do people, I mean, is there any chance of a consumer backlash? When, we were, when you were bringing these stuff in, everyone backstage was going, oh, look at that, I remember that. People are very fond of their brands. And uh, do you think there's any chance that people might boycott Cadbury as a result of this? Well, th there may be an initial reaction to that. But, I mean, essentially, we love our British chocolate. And the word Cadbury is absolutely inherent within it. It's comfort value, it's trust. If they change the Cadbury name, they've, they've lost the plot. And the brand has actually got a real commercial value, hasn't it? It Alison? certainly does. Yeah, there's some recent research from a company called Brand Finance that measures brands uh, commercially. And uh, recently, uh, in the last few weeks, they've updated their uh, figures. Three billion pounds is the value that they've put on the Cadbury brand. Right. So if you're a craft, why would you want to tinker? Why would you want to take the name with, off or whatever? Absolutely, yeah. something that's already working. Okay, I'm sure that, that's what a lot of people are hoping. Thank you very much, Robert, for bringing this stuff in. It's a real walk down memory line. As I said, everyone forgot breaks. Like, oh, gosh, I remember those. Well, Kraft need to come to the museum to understand British heritage as a commercial world. That is a great yeah. plug, which we're not going to complain about. All right, <laughs> thanks very much indeed, Robert. Just you, have you got the old sixpenny, 6D crunchy bar there? Um, got, yes, uh, we have. Six, so two and a half, two and a half old new pens. You remember this bill, I do you? very well. Spencer, Different is, big looks... Different shape and bigger, too. How many of those did you get for your pocket money in those days, Bill? How well, many were th those? This, I like you can see this is week. the giant size. It is. And um, uh, similar to standard today. Uh, well, that's, that's an interesting... Oh, really? that, that again says something about our diets, maybe, that that was giant size, and now this is much, yeah, that, much bigger. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> Alrighty, <laughs> Tober Road. Look at the size of Tober Road. It's, it's tripled in size. There we go. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> uh, to school now.